Um, this message is for Sam. Sam, hi, it's Ben. I know this isn't the right way to do this, but here goes. You're a great girl, but I just don't think we should see each other anymore. You got a few things here. I'll leave them out for you to pick up. I guess that's it. Have a good life. Um, this message is for Sam. Sam, hi, it's Ben. I know this isn't the right way to do this, but here goes. You're a great girl, but I just don't think we should see each other anymore. You got a few things here. I'll leave them out for you to pick up. I guess that's it. Have a good life. Um, this message is for Sam. Sam, hi, it's Ben. I know that... So I guess that means you'll be sleeping here tonight, huh? Don't be sad. He wasn't that cute anyways. Morning. Right. Sam, I've told you a hundred times that when you leave the side door open, the dogs get in the garage and turn over the trash. Yes, Mr. Landlord. No, if I was your landlord, that would mean I'm collecting rent from you. Zach, Kelly's gonna be late for school. Come on, Kelly. Bye, Sam. Bye, sweetie. Bye, Mom. Bye, honey. Have a good day. What's with him? He told you not to leave the door open when you come in at 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh, so that's it. It's not the what, but the when and the who, right? Well, when we invited you to live here, we didn't think our home would become a revolving door for you and your boyfriends. Whatever. So, why are you all dressed up? I have a job interview this afternoon. Do you need to borrow my car? No. I'll take a bus to Ben's apartment, then I'll just catch another bus across town. Why do you need to go by Ben's first? To collect all of my worldly possessions. Maybe I can talk to him. You know, it's Wednesday. You could go to church with us tonight. There's a dinner. No, thanks. I got stuff I got to do. Suit yourself. It's your loss. Yeah. I guess I'll have to find another place where people can shake their heads at me. Open up, it's me. I don't believe this.
Excuse me. Excuse me. Is this the downtown line? Yeah. Disculpe, señora. Estoy tratando de encontrar la biblioteca pública. Do you believe this? It's bad enough they won't learn our language. They come around panhandling, too. Perdón, señor. Señor, estoy tratando de encontrar la biblioteca. Hey, 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 hey. Learn some English. And maybe I'll give you some help, all right? And then the love of the Lord will fill your heart. ¿Necesita ayuda? Sí. Estoy buscando la biblioteca pública. Siga a dos cuadras. Gracias. Muchas gracias. De nada. You just need directions. Hi, have you ever thought about where you'll spend eternity? Do you know the path that your sin is leading you to? I'm just waiting for the bus, okay? Come on, Blaine, we gotta get going. Let me leave you with this gift. God bless you both. You didn't see Alter Boy being so nice when that guy needed directions. Selective compassion is a big problem these days. You too? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was just agreeing with you. I'm... It's okay. I think you can trust me. Yeah, no offense. I don't trust anybody. Nobody at all? What? You just said you don't trust anybody, and I said nobody at all. I'm sorry, I really don't want to talk about it. I mean, I don't trust strangers. I don't trust my family. I sure don't trust men. Good plan. What is? Not putting your trust in all those people. It's bound to wind up disappointed. Trouble is, that doesn't leave much, does it? No, it doesn't. Except God. What? You can always trust God. What, did those guys leave you here as a plant or something? No. You a preacher? Used to be. Did you quit or get kicked out? Neither. So how about you? How about me what? Did you quit the church or get kicked out? Excuse me? We've obviously got a problem with religion. Why are we talking about this? Pass the time. All right, let's just say that churchy people and I don't mix. Is that who kicked you out, the churchy people? Like, nobody kicked me out. I stay away because I choose to. Why were you there in the first place? This is just the way I was raised. I mean, everybody goes to church. Case closed. That's it? That and my sister. Our dad was a minister, so she thinks that if I just go to church, then there'll be some big transformation. So your sister thinks you need to be transformed? <laughs> yeah. Transformed into what? I don't know, the person I should be. So what's the person you are now? <laughs> the bus will be here long before I could get into all that. How about you give me a condensed version? My life is just a little off norm right now. Really? How so? Well, for starters, I'm a 30-year-old woman with no job, no husband. I live with my married sister and her family. Not exactly where I'm supposed to be in life. Says who? Everybody. <sighs> this is what my life has come to, telling my sob story to a stranger at a bus stop. I'm like one step away from me and that old lady with the 50 cats. Not quite there yet. So where does everybody say you're supposed to be right now? I don't know, I guess a little more settled. Not settled? Hello? 30, living with the sister. 
I know some cultures where people live with extended families their whole lives. Yeah, well, not the culture I have to deal with. What's in a box? My whole life. You live around here? No. I was just visiting. I have a job interview in the city. I didn't even know the downtown line came by here. Did you say downtown? This is the Walcott. The downtown stop is five blocks that way. <sighs> Great. It'd be a lot quicker to cut through the park. Thanks. Oh. Oh. Here. You need a hand. Well, listen. Why don't I walk with you? No, well, you can't do that. You have to catch your bus. I'm not in a hurry to get anywhere. Walking the park sounds good. Whatever. I, I think it's this way, Sam. How did you know my name? Because I have great supernatural powers. And it's written on your box. So your whole life's in here, huh? Oh, I was kidding about that. You could say my life is well represented there. Who's the guy? My latest mistake. A mistake because you trusted him? Yeah, I trusted. If you only knew how many guys I've trusted in the last three years. Is that what causes the rift between you and your sister? I don't know. Now, Tracy thinks her churchy friends see her as some kind of failure. She hasn't turned me around. You know, I met a girl once. She'd had more than her share of guys. And the whole town knew about it. So much so that she would wait to run her errands in town at a time when she knew nobody would be around. How'd you meet her? I was on my way to preach somewhere. And I happened to be passing through. We ended up having a pretty long conversation. You talked to her? Did she think you were hitting on her? <laughs> no. No, I broke the ice in a real simple way. I asked her for a drink of water. She was just carrying water around. That was a few years back. Anyway, she knew I was a preacher, and she knew I wanted to talk about her. Ooh, I bet that made her day. Well, she tried to deflect the conversation, talking about religious politics and how I was in the wrong part of town to be who I was. But I cut through all that. I told her, I know all about your history, and it doesn't matter to me. You gave her a free pass? Well, no such thing as a free pass. I mean, don't get me wrong, her life was all messed up at that point. But I was less interested in what she'd done as I was in what she was doing now and what she was going to do next. And I told her that. And? Well, she didn't see me as a threat anymore. She didn't mind talking about herself. So church is a big thing to your family. Somebody as perfect as Tracy and Zach, you bet. They usher me around to all their friends, who in turn treat me like so much scum. With their little bracelets. And would Jesus really do that? No, I wouldn't. What? You know, that's not what the church was ever meant to be. It was never intended to be a museum for saints. It was supposed to be more like, like a hospital for sinners. I thought sinners were the ones who didn't go to church. Meaning people who go to church don't sin? Some more, some less. For example? Well, the perfect people at Tracy's church, they seem to have it all together. I mean, at least more so than most people. So you think they sin less? I assume they do. You think that makes them better than other people? They think they are. Do you think they are? No, not better. But definitely closer to going to heaven. Ice cream? Sure. Do you have any French vanilla? What is it today? Vanilla ice cake.
Sorry, I only played six today. Come to have me that. Come to have me that. She's here from Korea visiting a friend. The friend asked her to watch the stand while she ran to the store. So you work for the United Nations or what? Sometimes. Back to the people at your sister's church. You ever been in a wedding? Yeah, my sister's. Well, let's say, right before the ceremony, right before she's about to go out, she was eating a big fudge sickle and dropped it and it made a big stain on the front of her dress. Could she still wear it out for the ceremony? No, it'd be ruined. All right, let's rewind and say she was eating a fudge sickle and just a few drops of chocolate got on her dress. Is it okay to wear it now? No, it'd still be just as ruined. So a few drops of chocolate ruined the whole white dress just like a big stain, right? Well, yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, God says that sin disqualifies people from going to heaven, even a little sin. So it doesn't matter if the people of the church sin a little or a lot, they're still ruined, just like the dress. But that would make it impossible for anyone to go to heaven. Well, that's where the sacrifice comes in. Talking about the crucifixion. You said your dad was a minister. You believe Jesus is the son of God, right? Yeah. And that he was sacrificed on the cross and rose from the dead. Yeah, I learned that when I was a little kid. Who do you think he did it for? For the people in the church. The perfect people? Yeah. Why bother saving someone who's already perfect? Well, I don't mean they're Jesus perfect. I mean they've gotten themselves to a place where they can get to heaven. What's your plan for getting there? Dude, I don't even have a plan for my bus fare home tonight. My life is just complicated, you know? I, I'm not one of the perfect people, and I'm okay with that. How did the water girl feel about church? Not the same as you. I thought that only the best of the best got to go to heaven. What'd you tell her? Same thing I'm telling you. That the sacrifice was made for the imperfect people. The newsflash is all people are imperfect and fall way short of qualifying for heaven. Well, that means everyone goes to heaven. I mean, if we're all imperfect and Jesus died for the imperfect, then we're all set, right? Well, there's a little more to it than that. Incoming. Is this yours? What, do you want it back? Thank you. You're welcome. So, go on. There's more to it? Let's say when we get to the other side of this park, you're gonna be really thirsty. Wait a minute, does this one end up with fudge sickle all over me? Not this one. Now, when we get to the other side, I buy you a bottle of water and hand it to you. Now, you're standing there with your bottle of water unopened. Are you still thirsty? Well, I will be till I take a drink. So even though the water was made available to you, you'd have to do your part and drink it before your thirst would be quenched, right? Sure. That's what I meant when I said there's more to it. The sacrifice on the cross was like handing you the bottle of water. Unless you do your part and take it, the bottle won't be opened, and you'll still be thirsty. In fact, you'll always be thirsty. so hard on yourself. I don't think my problem is I always hook up with such losers. And that makes a difference how? Well, if my last few boyfriends had been doctors or lawyers. And how long have you been defining yourself according to the person you're currently with? Well, I... Well, Sam, you don't have value because of your job or the job of the person you're dating. You have value because the creator of everything Gave up his life just so the two of you could be together. I'll remember that. So, how did you leave things with the water girl? Well, after I explained to her that heaven was just as much hers as the people that looked down on her, she started looking at things a little differently. Meaning? Meaning she cared less about what people thought and more about what God thought. So she felt better about the whole religion thing? 
Sam. God isn't about some stuffy religion. Religion, by definition, means to bind up. God's about a relationship. A relationship is where two people talk to each other, and two people do things because they love each other. It's a big difference. Yeah. Come on. I better get you to your bus. Listen, don't give up on the whole church just because a few people don't get it. Why don't you go back there and read his word, give him your praise. I guarantee you you'll find other people there just like you. Maybe. I just get, you know, discouraged about the whole thing sometimes. You like old movies, right? Yeah, how'd you know? You know what I said of Ben-Hur, right before the big chariot race scene? Charlton Heston went to the director and he told him, you know, I really don't know that much about horses. I think I can stay up in the chariot, but I don't think there's any way I can actually win the race. And the director told Charlton Heston the same thing God tells you. You just stay in the race. I'll make sure you win. And remember, the church is just a building. Loving God, letting him love you. It starts right here. Have a good interview. Hey, aren't you going to go back to catch your bus? Huh. I think I'd rather walk. Hold on. You know, I was going to totally bag this interview and go beg my boyfriend to take me back, but um, now I'm not. So, you probably saved my life. I did that a long time ago. I know.
some love. 